It is so beautiful, aren't they? So when you're moving fish, what you want to do is not have too many fish per container. And if you've got the luxury of space, then what you want to do is just have a little bit of water. So when the fish are swimming, you really want the fish to be agitating the surface. Because what we don't want is a flat surface and then the gas can't exchange. And if the gas can't exchange, then you don't reoxygenate the water. Whereas if you watch this guy, as his tail is um, lowering the surface tension of the water, that allows the oxygen into the water. And this is a privilege that you have got if you've got the room. So what we're doing now is just cleaning this filter. It's really great to actually give the filter a clean before the service, like a week or two before, and make sure the aquarium's well water changed a week or two before, and make sure you use a gravel cleaner when you're doing your water change. Now, the first thing we did was clean the sponges using water that were removed from the aquarium, and that was nice and dirty. Um, we've got some poly filter here, and that's nice and black, so that needs replacing. We've got some carbon. Carbon is only really good for a month or so. And the carbon will suck in toxins until it's full and then release them again. So we definitely want to replace that carbon. Now we've got some marine pure balls. Now this stuff here is the magic. This is the best media you can get. You want to clean that in water from the fish tank, not water from the tap, which is what we've done. Then we've got some noodles. I don't really rate the noodles because the noodles are really just nitrification. I'd rather have the marine pure, which is parallel denitrification. Um, this is great stuff. That's marine pure gems. Um, so we just give this filter a bit of a clean out and that's going to help a hell of a lot. New poly filter, replace the carbon, clean that in tank water, clean that in tank water, and then we're in business. We really want to do it monthly. Single pump will also have an impeller in it. So what you want to do is clean that magnet and you want to clean that housing. And if that's done a couple of times a year, you'll find your filter works really well. And if you ever find that it reduces the flow, then definitely give this a clean. When you're installing yeah, these glossy like cabinets, the, the first thing you want to do is wind all of these right down. So if you wind it all the way in, um, then you can push them all in position. And then in the top, there's that little um, stopper that you can pull out. And then in the back of these screws, there is a um, Phillips head. And then you can use that Phillips head and then that Phillips head is going to extend the little feet out of the bottom so you can actually use these feet to level the fish tank. So start off all the way in and then wind them up as you're required to make sure that your tank's nice and level because it's really important your tank's level before you start filling it with water. So in reference to sand, um, this tank has fine sand, but it's not too fine. I'm actually very happy with the thickness of this sand. And then there's some spare sand here. It's really important that this spare sand is rinsed before used because what we don't want is for this sand to become anoxic and then for various gases like hydrogen sulfide to be introduced to the tank. So I actually want the sand as thin as I can, particularly because the sand is quite fine. I do not want it to go anoxic. And that's also the same reason why I want to make sure the filter is cleaned quite regularly. With that many fish and that size filter, I'd really want it cleaned once a month because inside the um, media, I don't want it to go anoxic. I don't want the bacteria um, to run out of oxygen. Otherwise, we can start to form bad bacteria. So all we've done here is take the whole tank apart all of the water went into drums, the fish went into drums, um, then it was moved to the next location, it was leveled, and now everything's put back in, and now we're going to um, start hooking all the filtration back up. Now after a move like this, putting in a generous amount of stress coat isn't gonna hurt, and I would encourage that whenever you're doing a tank move or something like this, it's good to bring a water sample down a week or so before you do the move and definitely bring a water sample down several days or a week after you do the move so we can check on the water and bring a little video so we can see what's going on and 
see how it all settled in. Air pumps aren't vibrating on anything hard or it'll be noisy. And it's really good to put a little kitty litter tray or some sort of tray under the canister and that'll catch any drips when you're um, changing the filter. You can, have to do a bit of... Yeah, you can actually attach a blade onto the front of these mag floats. Has that got sand in it? That's so Shouldn't. annoying when you hear yeah, that you, sand. Yeah, scratching. you don't want sand. Because he, we did notice there's some scratches. But if you get a flipper, a flipper actually oh, lifts off and it yeah. doesn't have the Velcro and the sand doesn't get stuck. Be, be an issue. <laughs> yeah. A flipper is the best thing you'll ever buy. So okay. you, you put a flipper on it. Yep. It's a razor blade, but it's also raised. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry as much about the sand. Yeah. And it'll just do all this stuff like instantly. Yeah. It, it, clean, it makes cleaning the tank so much quicker. Yeah. When you get all this crusty calcium, the best way to clean that is just get some, some um, citric acid and wipe over it with citric acid. Citric acid. And that cleans off these white bits. Off.